section, but the sewage plan is essential for, for any improvement in that part of town. Moving north, uh, Route 28, it goes without saying, every one of those restaurants, every uh, store, every piece of property, if, that, if any of that property is going to be developed responsibly in, in the best interest of the taxpayers, we're going to need to have that area sewered as well. Moving further up to the Martins Pond area and all the small residences, Star Market, that whole area, it is essential for the protection of our drinking water, our water supply, to have that area properly sewered. To deal with the issue of groundwater injection, this is water which has already been cleaned and filtered and then is then re-injected into the water table for further filtering through the sands itself. This is, um, this technology is, has been well proven. There's many great examples in and about the Commonwealth um, and even some communities, uh, fancier ones like Weston, has that same type of system with a huge greenhouse that actually uses plants to clean the water before it gets in. So there's wonderful new technologies available. If we do not vote to do this study and we fall behind, we'll be in competition with all those other cities and towns behind the eight ball once again. I encourage everyone to vote for this study. And then once we have all the facts, we can really make intelligent decisions, then we can spend our money and the state's money appropriately. If we get behind the eight ball on this, we'll be here five years from now going, oh, uh, <clears throat> oh, uh, and I don't want to be in that position. Thank you. Mr. Smith in the aisle. Thanks. Uh, one thing that we seem to be missing in this discussion is North Reading doesn't need a sewer system. Um, our close personal friends at the General Mail Facility need to fix their septic system in order to expand, but they will do that all by themselves on their own land with their own facilities and their own stuff if we do nothing here tonight. The General Mail Facility needs us, but we don't particularly need them or their sewage. Okay? Uh, yes, there are people in Martin's Pond, there are people in other places in town with septic systems and, and septic, septic system problems. But I'd ask them to show some personal responsibility. If my system fails, do I go around and pass the hat to my neighbors and ask for help? No. If the, I, I, I can't believe that I'm hearing that sewers would help clear up toxic waste sites. If there were sewers in places where we're talking about commercial districts, uh, we're gonna get more stuff into the sewers. Oh, it's just the sewer, it doesn't go anywhere. It just evaporates, it's out of my backyard. If I go home and pour a bottle of trichloride on my toilet, I've got a toxic waste dump out in my front yard. If I have a sewer and I do that, it's gone. It didn't end up anywhere. Well, I live on Chestnut Street. It ends up across the street from me, but that's a detail. Um, now, I went to one of these meetings on, on the details of this thing. This is nothing but a glorified septic system. There are some tanks that let things settle and let things float, and then you just dump it into the ground just like a big leaching field. Um, only the specs on the offset from the water table, how much clearance you need from the water table, um, are no longer four feet above the maximum high level. It's four feet above where it usually gets. Well, if anyone's noticed, the water level doesn't seem to be doing anything sane lately in the, in the monsoon season. And uh, the first few years I lived here, I had maybe a quarter of an inch of water in my basement. Last year, I had three inches of water in my basement. Um, I'm not sure that the historical levels of what the water table does uh, have any meaning. What happens when this thing overflows? What happens when the water table gets higher than they think it is? They struck water on Chestnut Street when they were digging to put in those uh, conduits for the uh, new power station. Um, this study is, it's only $400,000. It's free money. It's coming from, no wait, we have to pay it back. This is real money. This is $20,000 a year for the next 20 years. This is money that the town has to pay. And this is just the study. This isn't the who knows how many millions of dollars that this thing is going to actually cost, which isn't free money either. It's user fees and it's costs that homeowners and taxpayers in this town are going to have to bear. Um, if we had $400,000, let's spend it on schools or a police station or something, something in FUMP because FUMP plans for things. Where was the plan? Is this in the FUMP plan? I didn't see this in the FUMP plan. This is just, oh, another 400000 to spend millions of dollars later, okay? Um, this thing isn't allowed to be 
anywhere near the town wells. And I've been informed that the uh, Barry site is right out, so it's really, we're talking about the DPW site, even though we don't seem to be able to say that in town meeting. Um, and it can't be near the town wells because it will pollute them. Well, I live across the street and I have a well and I'm out of luck. Um, in that same site, we already have the cell tower, we have the substation, we have the DPW garage, we have its expansion, we have additional traffic. We have new phone poles with new uh, phone wires on them. We have digging up the street. We have all kinds of work going on there. I'd say that's about enough. We're talking about costs. Periodic pumping of a septic system is very inexpensive. Uh, every five years you pay, what, $100 or so to pump out your septic tank. If people aren't, well, okay, what is it? Well, okay. Well, we do. Sorry, we do ours every five. That's, key, uh, that's uh, the okay. gentleman who it's, is. It's relatively cheap. It's maintenance that people should be doing. Um, they talk about the eventual failure of septic systems. A properly maintained septic system is good for how long? Fifty years. If if you don't maintain them, they're going to fail. But Mr. We, Smith. Okay. Uh, you have five minutes, and I think your fi five minutes are just about up. Okay, I'm, I'm nearly done here. Close um, up. We're, we're also talking about the economic development of Concord Street. Prove the economic development with a plan or study and build something on the Berry site, and, you know, do it where it's needed. Um, again, the, I, don't, I don't trust a proposal that's going to cost a lot of money but promise to lower my taxes. And if homeowners need Title V relief, let's address Title V, not build a sewer system. And again, why isn't this part of the FUMP, which is where all the big money is supposed to be coming from? The chair is ready to hear from the CPC. Uh, either one. Please uh, speak to, yes. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Gary Hunt. I live on 259 Elm Street, and I'm the chairman of the Board of Health and I've been on the board since 1986, since I moved to town. Many of you may know me, may have come before me, but we preside over all septic discharge in this town. Uh, there's been a lot of growth and development in this town in the last 14 years. That's influenced water patterns, some systems that were working many years ago are now in a state of failure because of that development, some along the Ipswich River and in sensitive areas. The gentleman that spoke about Martin Pond is correct. Some properties up there don't even have septic systems. And sometimes they find that out the hard way when they come in for a variance. This study that we're talking about isn't purely to support the industrial growth of the town over on Concord Street. It's here primarily, or its first step would be to gather much needed data on septic discharge in this town, which would benefit any and all alternatives that we might need to pursue in the future, even if the industrial uh, discharge permits and so forth didn't go forward and that plant wasn't built, this data would be valuable. How many of you in this room have ever had your septic system pumped? Okay. Do you ever wonder where it goes? A guy goes up with a truck, okay. You give him about 300 bucks. It's about 300 bucks now. And every five years is far too long, far too long. Some people have their systems pumped every six months, every year, because of the water table. Well, you know where that discharge goes? It goes to a approved DEP facility, Greater Lawrence, South Essex, where have you. A number of times while I've been on the board, the state has said, stop. You can't discharge to those places. Their permits were restricted. Those people now, the trucks have to find other locations. At one point, they had to drive all the way to Upper Blackstone, out in Millbury, to discharge it. So each and every one of us in this room are a stakeholder in this process, okay, because we have a, a, a residential septic system. The data from this study will benefit alternatives for disposal of that material if we need them, as well as disposal of septic in sensitive areas of town like Martin's Pond, the Ipswich River, Swan Pond, et cetera. Thank you. Mr. Smith. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I happen to be one of the, the two that voted against this particular article, um, and, and for a lot of various reasons. And first, Al, you're absolutely right, uh, Al, uh, from the transcript. I was on the Board of Selectmen back in the 70s when we had an opportunity to tie into the South Essex District. 
The Board of Selectmen and the town administrator at the town voted against it. It was a four to one vote against me. It would have cost us at the time $350,000 to run a trunk line up down to the Lower Elm Street area. I thought that was a, a, a sin not to do that. I also voted on a four to one vote for the uh, water in the Swan Pond Reservoir not to grant Danvers back a 99 year lease. Um, and to answer John's question early on, the post office is exactly the one that got us involved in this process. They decided that because their septic system failed, they wanted to go into a joint venture with the town of North Reading. All of a sudden, they pulled out about a month ago. Nobody said a word about them pulling out. In fact, I didn't hear it until about two weeks before this town meeting. Nor did the uh, Berry Reuse Committee up at the uh, Berry Center. And if you noticed all the, uh, all the uh, informational reports that came out in the North Reading transcript, you'd see where the town of North Reading tested the Berry property. We were testing the Berry property and we didn't even own it. The state still owns it. So while we were spending money out of a $100,000 grant from the post office to, to do a study on a piece of property that we didn't even own was, was truly amazing to me. Um, that was brought up and discussed thoroughly at, at the Board of Selectmen's meetings. Then let's go back to the post office. If you remember, about six years ago, they sued the town of North Reading for $132,000 because they didn't feel they should pay real estate taxes. The building at that time was owned by the Ames Department Stores. The town of North Reading billed the Ames Department Store for the, for the taxation, and the uh, Postal Department decided us to take us to court. Um, we were advised by town council that we couldn't win the case. Uh, Mr. O'Leary and myself were very, very upset, and we wanted to go on with the case. We were outvoted three to two. So the, boy, the uh, ending result was the Postal Department got $132,000 of town monies back then they gave us $100,000 of that $132,000, and we're supposed to feel good about it. Oh, you gave us back our own money to do a study for their facility. To me, that doesn't make too much sense, and um, I have a problem accepting those kind of um, parameters. So now what happens, as soon as they got us to do the study, and we found some land that was available for a, for a, a uh, treatment facility, they backed out of the proposal and left, that left us hanging with a $400,000 expense. And like somebody said over here a few minutes ago, yeah, the, the state is going to lend us $400,000 out of a revolving account, but we have to pay the $400,000 back. And what are we going to be left with? Another study that we have no money after the study is done to put the facility in the ground or whatever the study says we need. Where are we going to get the money to, to, to do the work? So I, I feel it's, it's like a two, two-fold proposition here. In, in one way, I certainly support the idea because, yes, we do have to get rid of groundwater sewerage. But on the other hand, if we're going to spend $400,000 and have nothing but a study in our hand to put in a draw someplace and we'll never be able to execute the parameters of the, of the, of the um, study, why are we spending the $400,000? There's no plan in place to put this facility into the ground. All the plan that's in, the only plan that's in place is to raise an appropriate $400,000. So I, I say, why are we doing this? We're jumping because somebody said if we don't do it this year, we're going to get charged 2%. 2%. That's $24,000 a year for a $400,000 loan. But in the meantime, we're spending $400,000 to save twenty-four. dollars That doesn't make sense to me. In the city of Gloucester, they went through the very same situation that we're going through right now. And I have personal friends that live there. After they ran the sewer and everybody went and supported the program, they all got hit with $20,000 bills because it was mandatory when the, when the system went by their houses, they had to join the system whether they liked it or not, and they were ordered to do so by the city of Gloucester. We could very well face the same situation. There's nothing in this report about a betterment improvement, as this gentleman said over here. What is the cost going to cost everybody when it goes by your house? Is there an improvement for these lines to go by? Nobody knows where the cost is going to be to put this thing in the ground. Um, City Mr. Smith, of, uh, you're getting close to your uh, five-minute limit. I know. I always get shut off, and I often wondered why. Everybody goes on with their information close, but you seem to watch my clock like I've this. I've got five people waiting, uh, Mr. Smith. Uh, I waited yeah. myself, Mr. Moderator. I know you did. Um, you still got two minutes. But. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> I guess uh, what I did try to do was Mr. Pasquale asked the question early on. Why, what was going on with the Postal Department? I didn't see the answer, Mr. Pasquale. The answer is they bailed out and left us with the $400,000 expense. And Al, you're right. We could have joined the East uh, South District uh, 
many, many years ago. So um, that's my position on it. Thank you.